Hello, Fanshawe, and welcome to EDI Talks. As part of our ongoing commitment to towards removing systemic barriers, EDI Talks features different subjects of cultural or diverse significance and is hosted by myself, Troy Townsend, and my pronouns are she, her. I'm the anti-racism and inclusion specialist at Fanshawe. World Hijab Day is an annual event founded by Nazma Khan in 2013, and it takes place on February 1st each year in 140 countries around the world. The intended purpose of World Hijab Day is to encourage women of all religions and backgrounds to wear and experience the hijab for a day and to educate and spread awareness on why hijab is born. So today, I have invited Shaheen Pardan, she, her, to discuss the significance and history of wearing hijab. So before we get into our discussion, Shaheen, please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your role and what you do at Fanshawe. Thank you, Troy. I'm super excited to be here today to talk about my experience wearing hijab. Uh, I started teaching at Fanshawe as a professor in 2019, and I currently teach at the London South Campus for the last three years. Um, one of the other things I do is I volunteer with the London Interfaith Peace Camp, where we have um, children and youth that are Christian, Muslim, and Jewish. We board a bus over the week-long day camp. We visit a church, we visit a mosque, and we visit a synagogue, just so students get a chance to experience the other faith in a safe way. Um, that experience of me helping being the Muslim rep representative for the camp led me to do other talks at churches, world religions classes in schools, um, with groups like the OPP and the London District Catholic School Board, just explaining my faith and what it's like to walk a day in a shoe of someone who wears hijab in London. Um, I've been wearing hijab for about 20 years now, and it's just become a part of who I am, and I'm grateful to share. Well, thank you. We appreciate that you uh, wish to share with us. So I'm gonna get into a couple of questions that I have for you. And the first one is like, how do you see the hijab in your life? You said you've been wearing it for about 20 years. So what can you tell us about that? So um, I feel like a lot of people feel like the hijab oppresses females that wear, that wear it. Uh, I've been told that I wish I could just snatch it off her head when I do some of my interfaith talks, which is hard for me to hear because since I've been wearing the hijab, I actually feel that it frees me quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, the hijab frees me in ways where I'm not focused on my career or my acceleration in this world. It frees me from being seen as an object or just a definition of what the beauty standards are in society. It makes me want to attain a higher position, to, to please my Lord instead of pleasing society. So in that way, I feel like it's not something that oppresses me in any way. It actually shows the world what my priorities are, and my priorities are my creator and my faith. Um, there's some uh, issues with maybe feeling like you belong or being validated. When we look at social media, it's all about your thumbs up or your likes or your heart. Mm -hmm and feeling that sense of validation, but also knowing that our culture is very much a cancel culture. You do one thing and then you're disregarded. So you're looking for validation or a sense of belonging from a group that may not really understand who you are, what your definitions are of, of what's important to you. So when you wear a hijab, you recognize that you have a greater purpose, that you're wearing a flag that says, I am a Muslim, and you wear that everywhere you go and to other people you're seen as a Muslim first. Mm -hmm. There's a great quote by Michelle Obama that says, your differentness will often precede you into a room. People see it before they see you, mm -hmm. and which leaves you with the, the task of overcoming. That's from her book, Becoming. Becoming, yeah. And so for me, when I read that, and she's defining that with her own experience as a black female, but for me, as a person who wears hijab, it is that flag, it is what people see. And sometimes that can lead to that burden of representation where everything I do is then, oh, this is what Muslims do, or this is what Muslim females do. And that word burden of representation is hard because in fact, it's more of an opportunity for me, an opportunity to show the world about my faith, the beauty of my faith, the peacefulness of my faith. And I don't see it as a burden as, you know, more so as an opportunity or a gift that's been given to God to females to be that flag of Islam everywhere we go. A mm -hmm. couple of points of interest mm -hmm. while 
I was listening to you. Number one, I love Michelle Obama, so <laughs> I'm really thrilled that you quoted her and I have read Becoming. Mm -hmm. um, number two, I find it interesting that you use the comparison of like how we live on social media mm -hmm. and it's all about the approval ratings. Mm -hmm. But one thing I say is that social media is so one dimensional mm -hmm. and we're really multi dimensional people. So it's like this is more representative of who you are as a person, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So how would you like others to view the hijab? Um, this is an interesting question. It's going to be Ramadan very soon, mm -hmm. the month where we fast. It starts in early March. And in the month of Ramadan, sometimes I'll be asked, oh, well, tell me about fasting. Mm -hmm. So I'll explain to people that we don't eat or drink, not even water, during daylight hours, which sometimes is 18 hours during the day. And the, the responses I get are, oh, wow, that takes a lot of discipline and a commitment to your faith. And can't you just sneak a potato chip? Like, who's going to know, right? And when we explain that, well, God has a, a greater plan for us. He created us. He knows what's best for us. And if we believe that in terms of fasting as well, that fasting is actually good for us, and we're not doing it just for other people. We're doing it to please God, who knows us, who knows our bodies, who thinks this is good for us. Um, we get a lot of respect in the end. People say, wow, that takes a lot of discipline and sacrifice and commitment, and we get that respect from others. Not that we're doing it for their respect, mm -hmm. we're doing it ultimately for God. But I wondered why the hijab isn't seen in the same way. Mm -hmm. Why people don't give that respect to women who are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. They're sacrificing, they're showing their discipline, they're showing their commitment to their faith. And even especially after June 6, 2021, where a Muslim family was killed multi-generations for taking a walk by someone in a black pickup truck that decided, I'm gonna kill that family just because they're Muslim. Wearing hijab also requires you to have a lot more courage and bravery. Mm -hmm. It's like we have a target or a bullseye on the back of our head just for wearing a scarf. And that, to me, requires us to Think of Muslims as having a little higher level of respect for making that transition to actually saying, I want to wear hijab, I am brave enough to put that on my head. And what I would like others to realize is that we're motivated, not just to face our challenges, but to conquer them as being visibly Muslim females. Thank you for that explanation. And that's exactly what I was thinking is how much respect I have for you for doing something so brave. So thank you for explaining it. So can you um, maybe help explain how the hijab can influence others who are not Muslim? So after the June 6th attacks, um, a lot of my interfaith contacts or friends reached out to me offering words of support, telling me to keep doing what you're doing. We need you to keep talking about your faith and, and how beautiful it is because there is hatred out there. Uh, one of the people that reached out to me is one of my Catholic friends. And she wrote something to me that I carry with me. I'm going to read what she said to me. She said, may your visible sign of faith, the hijab, continue to be a source of power for you and all women. To me, the hijab speaks. It speaks a message that our world needs today more than ever. A message of love, hope, and peace. When you wear the hijab, it makes me want to be more outward in expressing my faith. So this is coming from someone who is a different faith, mm -hmm. but who sees my profession of faith as a way to inspire her to have her profession of faith. That's right. It is very inspiring. So, um, yes, it's, it's unfortunate, the events that took place on June 6th, but Fajr is an ally to people of all faiths and our brothers and sisters of the Muslim faith. We, we are here to support you. So when we meet someone, on campus or outside in the community, like a student who's wearing a hijab, how should we treat them? That's a, another great question. Um, when you meet someone who wears hijab, don't assume they don't speak English. I've had that happen to me more times than I can imagine. Uh, people come to me, they don't talk to me, they'll talk to the people around them. I even had someone say, well, I didn't know you spoke English. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to have that assumption put on you. Um, also, don't assume they're not educated. Don't assume that they're oppressed in any way. If they're the only Muslim in your classroom, don't say, oh, what are your views on the Middle East politics uh -huh. or on, on the faith in general? 
they may not be comfortable to share. They shouldn't be the token in your classroom that's there to represent the entire faith. Um, so, you know, respect that boundary. For me, I was born in Canada, and it's the only place I can consider home. I don't have a back home. Um, and I've had people come to me and say, oh, in Christmas, we put trees in our home and try to explain the Canadian culture to me. Mm -hmm. um, I remember recently I was going to the bank and you know how there's, there's double doors when you go to the bank. Mm -hmm. So I open, um, there's a gentleman there. He opened the first door for me. I walk through and then I open the second door for him and he wouldn't go through the door. And he says, oh no, ladies first. And I'm like, you know what, please. And he said, well, in Canada, we respect our women, right? Just those, those heavy comments to insinuate that, well, wherever you're from, because you're obviously an outsider, you don't respect women the way we do in Canada. And there's a lot to that, because mm -hmm. do we really respect women in Canada? We could have a whole talk about that. Um, but just that idea that I have to be from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. I'm othered, mm -hmm. right? And that experience is hurtful, um, especially when you're, you're that's all you identify with, being a Canadian Muslim, right? right? Um, and having that beast told that that's not how you can identify, right? Yeah. yeah. And that act, or what he said, it almost diminished his act of yeah. kindness by opening the door for you yeah. because there's so many layers to peel back on the underlying message behind yeah. his comment. Yeah. And I understand, and I have also been, like people assume, that I'm not Canadian or they're very shocked when I start talking and mm -hmm. they're like, oh, they're expecting an accent or a different language. And yes, so there's there's a lot of assumptions or underlying messages there that we just need to like we need to stop assuming. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK, so if you could leave us with a final thought, a takeaway for the viewers, what would that be? So I once saw this image on the internet. It was a cartoon female wearing a hijab and holding it really tight on the bottom. And there was this large hand that has the word liberation written across it that is pulling or trying to snatch the hijab away from her. And the words on the, the image say, you can't liberate the free. To me, that speaks volumes. It shows you know, this idea that we're trying to help everyone or make their lives better or feel that they're oppressed when really that person feels free for wearing her hijab. And that liberation is actually the form of oppression um, or that idea that we can liberate you is the form of oppression for that person. So that would be my takeaway. Don't assume, um, don't feel like you're here to save the world. Um, change your mentality. Talk to someone who wears hijab. Get to know their perspective. Exactly. It's just about building awareness, which is why we're having this mm -hmm. conversation today. So I thank you very much, Shaheen, for coming and sharing with us. And um, on World Hijab Day, February 1st, if you feel like trying out a hijab to wear it for a day, we are going to put a link to a tutorial at the bottom of this screen. So I just want to thank Shaheen once again for coming to chat with me. And if any viewers have thoughts you would like to share or comments or questions, you are welcome to email us at edi at Other than that, take care of yourselves and each other. Thank you.